finally, somebody gives Sword Soul some recognition, and is that Exo Sister as well? Don't make 30% of you that have not smashed the ever living crap out of that subscribe button. Smash it so you guys don't miss out. More awesome content. Your Toronto Regional Breakdown here is pretty interesting, actually. We saw two Dragon Link out here. If you told me, looking at like all the differences in the hot potatoing across the board of all these events here, seeing that Dragon Link out of nowhere here actually um, would be highest representation in some of these areas, I think is kind of interesting. Actually, that's the that's the kind of info that you uh, you're like really like. Also, really shows the differences out here in in the regional difference meta games. We also had one Vanquish Soul here. Remember when people said Vanquish Soul wasn't going to be a top meta game contender? Well, it has been doing fantastic actually. Uh, the deck has been one of the strongest decks we have seen out here. And I, I think it's actually very, very nice to see. We also had one Labyrinth. This is a very nice change of pace here, where we go from what like the, the explosion of like three of that we saw back down to one. We also had Mana Diem cre uh, creeping in to top cut as well. I didn't necessarily expect to see that today. And then we had Sword Soul. Now, the thing that made this Sword Soul really, really exciting was it won the regional. Out of nowhere, Sword Soul actually gets a very nice first place seat here at the dinner table. And I will say, after a lot of time, that that has been very, very nice to see. And then we have Rika joining in to the metagame fray here, which I'm not all that surprised to see that. And then Exosister joins in to the meta as well. You know, I've not seen Exosister hardly doing anything at all. And the fact that it was able to, you know, compete in this metagame, I think really says a lot. So let's pass on over so you can kind of have a little bit of an idea of how this metagame was shaping up here, shall we? And yes, yes, we do have Exosister. Winning our regional here was, is this... Robbie, you're you're kidding me, right? Like this is this is like the most basic sword soul deck that I've seen. Like, yeah, yeah. So so what if it is? Um, old reliable is still always going to get the job done. Especially you gotta remember sword soul's very consistent ending on, you know, cheese out slash baron not getting the beard right now. It's kind of free real estate, so yeah, you definitely gotta keep in mind out here where, you know, when you can see the value um, of your monsters actually kind of coming together is good. Um, still playing double tie, which I think is fine. Um, some of the biggest things that people will really discount out here is like, do I really need to? Yes, still play two tie. Incredible Ecclesia is amazing. One Synthana has been good for the level four extension option. Um, obviously, you know, the card that it gives you. We have seen people try to be really cutesy out here, trying to play the fire one, but like, it, it's very rare in between. Uh, double Dragon Cycle, double Vessel here is also fine. Um, looking at the rest of this, Hand Trap Ratio checks out. Um, anti spell is fine. We have a very small base deal package down here. Yeah, this uh, this fits this fits the definition of yeah. This is the same consistent pile that we have seen for a little while now. Next up here, Vanquish Soul, and I've said this. You know, I will say this again for every one of these Vanquish Soul list that we've covered. Just because you don't want to play TC Boo in the deck. Play the TC boot. The TC boot ensures that you get the free auto wins where you can get them. All right. I know a lot of people don't seem to like that, but like this deck's strong suit is, you know, you generate the advantage off of the Borger. You have the big indestructible, ha ha ha, I'm unaffected boss monster. And then you have access to the powerhouses that are your hand traps. Like all of the moving pieces in this deck have to function together in order to get the best maximum results. And if you're not taking advantage of everything the deck has to offer, you're playing yourself. Now, we have seen uh, differences in builds, whether or not you're playing the Kumamungus or actually this, I, is this the first time I've seen Doggeron in this? Doggeron does fit the bill for the, the fire monster in here as well. Um, but we have seen that you have option trees. You can play Kumamungus, you can play this. They're citing the Radeon down here as well. So 
you have multiple skill trees you can go down also uh, ghost bell has been gaining a little bit of popularity right now as well especially when you can see you know strong power like this um, I would say that that's actually pretty good to see here. Uh, outside of that, the rest of the deck feels incredibly standard. Next up here, Mana Diem. Now, all things considered here for this deck, I have, up to this point, only seen builds that can barely make it into the top 16. We had a 51st, we had, oh, what was it, uh, a 21st placer? Don't quote me on that, but this deck has actually kind of struggled out here to get its foot in the door. So the fact that we are seeing a build out here actually making it into the meta is good. There's also the first list that I've seen actually playing Trivi Karma here as well. Don't underestimate this card. I, I feel like tier players look at this and like, well, yeah, this is, you play this for the searchable option. You also can play this for target of ice, star frost, and your monster zone and effect monster, opponent controls. To get the effects of the opponent's monster, do your targeted monster gains attack equal to half the original attack of that monster, whichever is higher. I mean, hey, this is a free negate, all right? And it is searchable because it does have vices in the name. So, and then of course, it itself also does other searching, but um, I think a lot of people tend to want to discount sorts of things here. Outside of that, I mean, uh, the Scareclaw package has been pretty much reduced in this package. I mean, obviously, you, you're playing double Reinhardt, like, so you can do the line of play through the Lightheart, obviously. The Arrival is just going to be your extender, and then this, you know, is obviously your searcher for the small techable options that you get here. So, yeah, everything looks pretty straightforward here. Next up is Rika Son Avalon. Now, we do see Spiritual War Art Awe down here. This is now the third time, I think, that we've seen this in the format here, where water players are now taking advantage of this. Perfectly understandable. I mean, you end on water monsters that you can actually not worry about and be able to pop them off so you can get resource knowledge from your opponent's hand. Uh, this card actually is a very strong card, this format. And I, I think a lot of people are going to very much... I guess continue to discount this, but okay, as long as this exists in the format, people are going to try this. Uh, we also have evenly matches dark rollers, so you can basically go first or second. Either, either mode with this deck is going to give you a very strong shot at the metagame, all right? Uh, and then, of course, I mean, you have more going second cards here. We do play the one for one to beam out the value tree here. Who knew that the day that a vanilla monster would be one of the absolute most chaotically broken cards in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh? Yeah, wouldn't have been me. But outside of that, I think the the little interactions that you're getting right now with Rika Sun Avalon will continue to make this deck, honestly, a very scary metagame contender. If players aren't prepared for it, I feel like I say that with every deck, but like it really is that good at the end of the day. So good stuff just seeing like the differences in metagame power here. And last but not least here, we have Exosister. Now, when I what I definitely expected here was like, what what can we do with Exosister right now? Like, what is your particular end board? Uh, well, um, for all intents and purposes here, still are doing Aratama with Sakitama plays, but if you are expecting like some 900 IQ level of innovation, no, that's that's not really what you're going to get here. What you kind of get with Exosister is a, a very good consistent package at setting up for the Magnifica. The problem with this deck is still going to be the same problem that it's had. If something happens to the end board investment, I guess you can say this about like any deck right now, but things kind of come falling down around you very quickly. And you need to be able to, one, protect your investment, make sure that whatever board you're setting up here puts you into a good board state. And you might not get that all the time. So that's the little things that you really need to consider out here for a deck like this is just, hey, you know, whatever we're doing, one, will it be able to interrupt, will it be able to set up? Two, is there going to be more value than just the Zeus board breaker here? And three, I mean, you got to make sure that you're not losing to uh, talents because I, I feel like talents against this deck is just one of the worst possible scenarios that you can actually have happen. So that is everything that we have out of the Toronto Regional 
for you so far. So please, if come and download, tell me what you guys think, and I'll see your beautiful faces back here later in the day, guys. Peace out. Patrons, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.